So we have seen how to measure the distance between two different points by using a meter scale. Right, a ruler can be used to measure the distance or a tape can be used to measure the distance between two points. Here we have two more points A and B. Now how to measure the distance between A and B? It's very simple. You may get a doubt. Don't you know that? We can use a scale. We can bring a scale and see that what is the distance in centimeters. But here the thing is point A to B there is a path. This is a park. This is a path walking area by which we can reach A to B. So the distance we have to measure is the path of this particular point A to B. But this path is not straight to use a scale. How is the path? It is a curved line or a curved path. It is not straight. How can I measure this now? So a scale, I cannot use the scale. Scale is because it's straight. It is not accurate. If you measure the distance between A and B using a scale, it is not correct. So here I can take help of a thread or a rope to measure the distance of a curved line. So let us see how to do that. Here I have a jute thread. See, to measure the distance, first I have to hold the thread at the starting point. Now I keep the thread to some other point, to some other extent here. I can hold it like. And with the other hand, I am taking one more point, I am extending it, I am holding another point, I am holding that point with my left hand and I am taking out the thread with my right hand and I am leaving the left hand, holding this point again, I am taking out the thread, I am holding, leaving this and again I am doing the same till the end of that point. So this is the length of the curved line, you see that. It is much bigger, right? If you keep it straight. So if you keep the thread in this position, this thread will fit into this line. So this is the length of the curved line. You can take this length and you can keep it near a scale to measure how many centimeters it is. It is very simple. So this is the way how a curved line is measured. So moving things around us, we find so many things moving around us, right? Simply just I am sitting in a chair and seeing that I switched on the fan, I see the fan is moving. It is moving. There is a kind of motion. I see some fly. It came into my room. It's going here and there buzzing. I'm feared that it may go into my ears. Just I plugged my ears. So it's taking different, 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 different path. It's not going in a particular way. It's going all around and finally it went off through the window. Right. So see that, then I found some ants were taking some sugar fell on the ground. The ants, they were coming in one particular pattern, they are taking a path and going up. So different things around us, whether living or non-living, they show some kind of motion. Sometimes we can observe a one particular pattern in the motion. Right. Just I switched on the fan, the fan is rotating. So it is moving in one particular fashion. I see the pendulum of a clock, it's going in one particular fashion. You might have observed the different kind of motions when you go to a fair. If you go to a fun fair, what do you find over there? You find so many rides, right? You enjoy the rides. So how are the rides? What kind of rides do you find over there? You will find a big giant wheel. Yes. You take the giant wheel, you sit in the giant wheel, you go up, up there and you come down in a circular way. So there you are in a kept in a motion, you will enjoy the thrill, you will get the thrill when you are engaged in such a motion. What is that motion? It's a circular motion. And if you are kept in a, uh, that is um, Mary Columbus. Mary Columbus, it's like a swing, you will be going up and coming back. You have a to and fro motion, but that motion has a specific pattern. It goes up and comes down. You take a roller coaster, it goes this way, that way, this way, that way, finally comes down, it's a zigzag motion. You take a ride of a mini train, mini train, it goes in a circular track, it moves in such a way. 
So that motion has also got some pattern. Right. So this way you will find different kinds of motion. We observe different kinds of motion around us. So shall we categorize the different types of motion here? Let's see. The first one is rectilinear motion. So what is this rectilinear motion? That is the motion in which some object goes in a straight line. You see the highways, national highways. It's a very lengthy long roads in a straight path. You can see the cars, the cars that are traveling. So they will be going in a straight line. The motion of a car in a straight road you call it as a rectilinear motion. The soldiers they are marching. The soldiers they are marching. You see that Republic Day Parade. Have you ever seen the Republic Day Parade? So in the parade all the items and the people they will be going in a straight line. That is called as rectilinear motion. So if any object that moves in a straight line you call it as a rectilinear motion. So sometimes we find the motion, it takes place in a circular path. You call that motion is circular motion. It's called as circular motion. So where it takes the round path, it's rotating the blades of a fan. The blades of a fan. And what else you can find? Merry go round. So that also goes in circular way. You see that the oil mills and water mills, they are pulled by the bullocks. The bulls, they will be rotating around the well to draw the water from the well and to grind, ground the, grind the oil, seeds to get the oil. The bulls were used, they used it to rotate around the motor. So by that the seeds were ground to get the oil. So that is all circular motion. Sometimes we see some objects will be going to and fro, coming, going front and coming back. This to and fro motion is called as oscillatory motion. So you might have seen the rhymes hickory dickory clock, hickory dickory dock. So there you find that the clock's pendulum is moving to and fro, to and fro, to and fro. This is called as oscillatory motion. If anything is going to and fro, you call it as oscillatory motion. So we see different types of motion. One is a rectilinear motion, something which is traveling in a straight line. Circular motion, which is going something round and round and round in a fixed path. And oscillatory motion, something which is going to and fro, to and fro. If any motion is happening, if any motion is repeated with a specific time interval, right? So with a specific timing, you call it as a periodic motion. Periodic motion. Right? So the motion, it happens with a specific fixed set of time. With a specific time interval, it's a periodic motion. Right? So the pendulum, it will take one second to go to and fro that is a periodic motion okay so you enjoy the music in the music you will find the drums beating in a periodic way they are not played haphazardly they are played with a rhythm rhythm means it maintains a specific time so then you will enjoy it right so that is a periodic motion given you see that the moon goes around the earth in 28 days it takes for every 28 days i will do that same it's a periodic motion. Of course, it is a circular motion, but it is periodic. Here, the pendulum, of course, it is an oscillatory motion, but it is periodic. Right? So, this way, we can categorize the motions into rectilinear motion, circular motion, oscillatory motion. Again, we can further classify them into periodic motion and non-periodic motions. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.